Being able to end fights quickly is a skill set that a lot of players don't fully realize the importance of. It allows you to walk away with more materials, makes third parties less likely to happen, and allows you to move on and focus on the other aspects of the match. What's going on, guys? It's the Motivation Guy. That's right, the one and only Keith Allen. Hey, food for thought. Why do you keep beating yourself up so much? Why are you so hard on yourself? I know that you are your number one critic, but just embrace the journey. Understand that failure makes you great. The more times you fail, the more you learn not to fail. So stop being so hard on yourself and enjoy the process, all right? Connect with me on my Instagram because I would love for you to listen to the posts I'm putting up to inspire you to be great in this game and also in life. But before we get into a lot of you guys were asking for a creator code. So here it is. Be sure to use code PROGUYS in the item shop to support me and your friendly Fortnite team. Also, if you guys are interested in getting better at Fortnite, then click the link below to go to ProGuides.com where you can play with the best players in the world by just clicking a button. Sign up for our membership at ProGuides and you're going to get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongro. So if you want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuides.com. Also, be sure to drop a like on this video to show your support. We strive to bring you guys the best available content. All that being said, it was a lot. It's time to sit back, relax, and get my favorite candy, that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. The number one rule when it comes to finishing kills quickly is to always close the gap. Everyone say, close the gap. Thank you. All right, let me explain why. The first reason is because of defensive building. If you just sit back and spam your rifle at somebody, unless it's a team-based mode or you're third-partying, your opponent is just going to block every shot with their builds. You'll accomplish nothing doing this once they know you're there, so the only thing you can do is push up. Another reason to get up, close, and personal, I'm talking about all up in their space, is so that you can use traps. These bad boys are still insanely powerful when it comes to getting kills. In fact, we were watching some crack solo squad gameplay by Phase Replays, and he was using these things almost non-stop. Whether it was boxing players in and placing traps on walls or placing a trap on his floor, he was picking up kills left and right with them. I think it was at least six or seven in a single match. And by using these traps instead of taking gunfights, he avoided a lot of the risk associated with taking gunfights and was able to end engagements without losing too much health. But the main reason you guys want to get close is so that you can take control of structures and end fights with editing. Even against the most defensive players, if you take control of the structures right next to them, you can edit for some shots that won't easily be blocked. Night is that if you can control the structures, you can control the fight. And it's true for the most part. <laughs> but with that being said, you know, you don't always need to take your opponent's wall or make an edit to finish the kill. Sometimes they'll edit aggressively themselves and it's more important to be ready to fire back because as long as you have your gun out, when they make the edit, you can get your shot off first. You're gonna see really outstanding players take control of structures before or immediately after their first shot. For example, if two players are ramping up next to each other, an amateur might simply just shoot as soon as their enemy comes into view. The enemy will take a hit of damage, then place a wall for cover. Now they're inaccessible and the build battle goes on, but an exceptional player will comb them off first, place a wall between the ramp and their opponents, edit it, and then open fire. Since they put the wall down first, the enemy can't respond with their own for cover. Even though it takes time to place a wall and edit, it speeds things up in the long run and it allows for a faster kill. Here's another example of preemptive structure placement you might find useful. Let's say you get a few shots off on an enemy and they box up. When you push up to their box, you can connect a bunch of floors and cones all around the top of their one by one. After that, you can start pressuring the top of their box to try to get control, right? Okay, so if they're weakened, most players will simply edit out and create a new box to buy time. But if they do that, since you planned ahead, you can edit those pieces of yours and go for the kill. One of the most recognizable structure control techniques is done by placing ramps or cones inside your opponent's box. Since the second line of defense for whenever a wall gets taken is to put up a ramp, it's often a really good idea to control that piece before going for shots. That way, your opponent can't block them. The advanced method is to take a wall, edit it, build a ramp, and edit the left side of the ramp backward for an opening. You know, I'm sure you've seen the pros do this as lightning fast speeds, man. I know it's ridiculous how quickly they can do it, but that's just because partly because of how much they practice this technique. Alternatively, you can place a cone which is a bit faster since you don't have to edit it, but it doesn't have the same right side peak advantage you can get by editing stairs. So it's not necessarily better, it's just easier to perform. One pro we see use this method all the time is Team Envy's Bucky, and it helps him end fights that would otherwise go on and on and on. 
Our next tip is that you guys gotta be unexpected. Take this scenario for instance, all right? If you simply keep trying to take the same wall over and over and over again, your opponent isn't gonna have a hard time keeping track of what you're doing. But if you go for a single wall replace attempt, then maybe ramp up to start weakening the top only to drop down and go for a different wall again, it's gonna confuse them. They're gonna be less likely to know which piece to hold, giving you a greater chance of taking down their structures. Now that RPGs are so prevalent in the meta, here are a couple of tricks you can use to catch a turtling opponent completely off guard. First, all right, the RPG drop. Start by building up to your opponent's roof and placing a backward ramp into one of their walls. This will fake them out into thinking you're gonna drop there for a wall replace attempt. Instead, this is what you wanna do. Take out your RPG and fire at the base of the ramp. If you're on top of their box, you'll drop inside where you can pull out your shoddy for the finish. Most players don't even expect this at all, and it's quite easy to do now since RPGs can be found pretty much everywhere. But of course there's a big risk when you drop into somebody's box. They might be able to trap you, so you gotta be able to land your shots. If you're not too confident doing this last trick, okay, here's a safer variation of that, alright? Start off again by ramping up into their roof. Place the optimal stair piece to fake them out. Move back to your high ramp so that you're not standing on their roof. And then fire your RPG at the far bottom right corner of their box. Once you fire, quickly turbo build a roof and floor piece over their box and edit through for the kill. Why this works so great is that your opponent is probably going to focus on replacing their walls first, which essentially gives you a free replace on their roof. All right, so just a quick reminder for these tips. You need at least a green RPG to break through fully built brick. Fully built metal structures can be one shot by any RPG and wood will break no matter the rarity. So keep that in mind before you try this trick out. One large part of being able to end a fight quickly is getting a good opener on your opponents. This is especially useful, my friends, for the early and mid games, as these are the times when players are out in the open and vulnerable. Generally, if you're trying to play offensively at the start of the game, try first to get a decent kit and some materials. Then take a high ground or another sneaky position to hunt for kills. You don't have to play every early game this way, but the surprise factor and being able to open a fight by dealing 30, 60, or even more damage can do wonders in giving you the edge. So we've discussed the hiding mechanic with dumpsters and haystacks for ambush attacks before. Just to mention it again, if you can get your whole squad to hide in one, everyone jumping out at once can work. But as a solo, oh my goodness, there's just such a long delay after jumping that it's really not worth doing. What we have seen work though are those large bushes the new map has. They're sort of like the cornfields at Frenzy Farms. Hiding in these is sort of situational, since the opponent has to come to you. You know, you can't really be the one seeking them out. But when the safe zone is pretty small, they're actually a really effective hiding spot to flank from. Again, these bushes are pretty situational, so camping in one every match isn't gonna work. Now, just before we end, I need to briefly mention how important mechanical abilities are when it comes to finishing your limbs quickly, mainly aiming and editing, but building to an extent as well. When you look at pros slaying out and racking up kills left and right, their top-notch mechanics play a huge role. They don't delay the fight by missing shots or by screwing up edits. Instead, you know, their wall replaces are immaculate, man. Their edits aren't flubbed and their shots connect almost every single time. Any mistakes called by poor mechanics only delays things and, you know, it just gives your opponent more time to react, move, and even strike back. Like for example, if you replace somebody's wall, go for a quick edit, but don't mess up. That one or two second delay gives your opponent time to move, get high ground, and find a shot on you. Whereas if you don't mess up the edit, you can finish the kill and move on. With that being said, you need to practice your mechanics if you want to end fights quickly. You know, it plays far too large of a role to ignore, man. So as a warm up or any time you can run, run editing or aim courses in creative so you can just work on developing your mechanical skills. If you're looking for a new creative mode to practice in, you gotta check out Lunar Peter's Box Fighting Map. It's brand new for Chapter 2, and it's pretty awesome. There are a lot of settings you can customize to create the perfect one-on-one -on -one practice for you guys and for your friends. So just head into one of the fighting rooms and place a bunch of floors. Then one player boxes up and the other tries to kill them. This is the practice that a lot of pros have been preferring lately, mainly because of how important box fighting skills are in the current meta. We'll leave the code for this one, along with another aim and editing course you might find useful in the description below. Check them out. You know, to be real, most players aren't fully aware of how helpful it is to end fights quickly. Have you ever had those games where you win a long, hard-fought battle only to die to some guy that swoops in and finishes you? Annoying. 
Or how about those times where you leave the fight with 50 health and no mats, wondering why you took it in the first place? My goodness. Well, that's why the speed of your kills matters, guys. So begin working on your structure control during your fights. Look to engage from hidden or unexpected positions whenever you can. And always, always practice your mechanics so that you're not ruining your plays with messed up shots and wonky edits. All right, guys, once again, this is the motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. And make sure to follow me on my Instagram. I'm posting up vids to inspire you to not only be the best in this game, but also to be the best in life. I'm your number one fan. Remember that. We really hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Comment down below what you thought and what you like to see next. We strive to bring you guys daily quality content. So do us a favor by liking this video. Subscribe to the channel and show ProGuys.com some love for bringing you this video. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.